It's been a busy summer, and there's been a lot of developments in the workshop. So in this video, let's see how I've been able to level up on a budget. It's been a while since I opened my workshop, so I wanted this video to be a catch up on how I've tried to upgrade my shop, and I will also later reveal what I think is the first big investment you should make as an aspiring woodworker. Firstly, some background. My workshop is in a former commercial space of roughly 12 square meters. I have it set up into three different zones. The first is the storage area where I keep wood and any tools not in use. The second is the main making area where I have my main workbench. And the third is a bench for final assembly and finishing. So all in all, it's a small but functional space. If you saw the very very first video on this channel, you would know I moved into this space about 9 months ago. The first few months were me just getting to grips with the space and with my tools in general. I now feel I've reached a point where I've become more comfortable in how I build and so have been able to slowly add more higher end tools into my operation. This video is a slightly different format to the usual build videos. This time I'm going to show the process of building a piece of shop furniture, while at the same time showcasing the new tools I've accumulated over the past few months through each stage of the build to demonstrate how these few key tools fit into my workflow. And full disclaimer, I'm not sponsored by any of the tool manufacturers in this video. So one major aspect of my shop is that I have no table saw, and that leads me to the first tool on my list, a track saw. Now yes, this is a fest tool, but before you accuse me of having expensive taste, I bought this second hand on eBay where I snagged it for the price of £123. However, I had to buy my own replacement battery, which was a further £80. It was a bit scruffy on arrival, but it was nothing a little cleanup couldn't fix. This model is the HKC55EB Basic. It has all the functionality of their more popular plunge saw model, but at a lower price point. It has all the classic Festool quality of life features and is generally very intuitive to use, with depth and angle settings easily adjustable. It just goes to show that if you hunt around for secondhand deals, you can find a gem like this one. The main draw of this model is that it can be used with my Makita track. All in, this gives me the utility of a plunge saw and the thrill of owning a Festool, all for around £200. The track saw helps me break down larger panels with accuracy and for when I need to make straight cuts. Now with these panels of hardwood ply cut to size, I can begin the build. So maybe first I should show what I'm making today. It's a simple piece of shop furniture, but incorporates two types of joint that will come in handy for future cabinet builds. The rabbit joint, and the dado joint. The reason for this cabinet is to act as a stand for the next tool on my list and one of the more important ones in my current workflow, the router table. When looking for a good router table, I could only find ones either dirt cheap with no real dependable accuracy or ones in the 700 to 1000 pounds price range. I couldn't find much in the mid range. So I had to get creative and I bought this router table by Trend for around £220, which has a lot of the features you would expect from a fully fledged router table. The only modification I had to make was to countersink in some custom holes into the base plate to accommodate my router. And the router I chose to pair it with is from Rutlands, which was on clearance for only £80. The reason I chose this model mainly was because it has a rather generous micro adjustment knob, which makes height adjustment much easier, albeit done under the table. I think though this was an okay trade-off for getting a good quality table set up for around £300 total. The first cuts I have to make for the cabinet are the rabbits on the two end panels. And now you can see exactly the reason for this cabinet. This is currently how I've had to route, so I'm really making this cabinet for the sake of my knees. Now I think routing gets a bad rap. Yes, it is massively terrifying and full of danger, but what isn't in the workshop? The utility a good router table setup can offer is unrivaled, at least for my workflow. 
to me, this was an important investment so I could better realize my style of design, which incorporates a lot of profiles and through ten and details. Once I dialed in the rabbit depth, I repeated the cut on all appropriate sides. Next up were the dados, and because these are positioned in the middle of each panel, I used a handheld router. I could again make good use of my Makita track to ensure straight cuts. I did two panels at once so the alignment would always be perfect. I had to make a couple of passes to dial in the dado width just right. So this was a pretty hairy moment. If you watch carefully, the bit actually came loose while cutting, gouging out a bit too much material in the process. Anyway, terrifying moment aside, I cleaned up the cut with another pass. What was that I was saying about routing having a bad rap? Anyway, I could then dry fit the panels to check all my alignment was correct. From there I could move to the assembly area and proceed with the glue up. This brings me to an underrated but still necessary workshop accessory. Clamps. Not sure if they classify as a tool but anyway they're next on this list. Specifically these Bessie clamps which are ideal for cabinet making and panel glue ups. I got a set of six in a recent half price sale. I think these will expand my capability with larger pieces of furniture. I glued in the back panel which was a piece of 12mm ply so that the whole thing would be extra robust. With the cabinet out of clamps, I could examine my joints. To be honest, the hardwood ply was definitely fighting with me, and next time I would definitely stretch the budget to get birch ply instead. I'm adding some runners for a small tray to hold my router bits. cut down a piece of scrap ply with some edge banding already glued on from a previous project. To finish the tray I'll be using the next tool on my list, a drill press. You may have seen this a few times in my previous build videos, this is the Bosch PBD40 and although it's green not blue, it's still incredibly precise and powerful and great bang for your buck. It has a keyless chuck, digital display and laser guide. 
I again bought this open box so the price was slightly reduced. With all the parts of the build almost ready, it's now time to reveal what I think is the first major tool upgrade any maker should go for. And that is... a random orbital sounder. But wait, not just any random orbital sounder, either the Merker or the Fest tool with 5mm oscillation. In this case I splurged on the Merker and from an authorised reseller, rather than buying it second hand. This model takes both 125 and 150 mm sanding discs, which is good because coming from my DeWalt sander I have a lot of 125 mm discs left over. I also bought an adapter to use it with any old shop vac, so yeah, the yellows may not match, but that's okay. This highlights the big difference between secondhand versus new, the warranty. In my case, when I looked for the Festool model, I could firstly only find it affordable secondhand, and even then it was still more expensive than the Merca brand new. I know that may vary country to country, but for me it was clear to go with a new Merca, which includes a 3 year warranty versus none at all. So why would I recommend upgrading your sander first? Well it may come at a big cost at first, but the time saved from sanding is significant and such a massive benefit, making it worthwhile on balance over the life of the tool. Now we can finish up and move the cabinet into place to add the router table on the top. I left a large compartment for my belt sander and a smaller compartment for other accessories underneath. The cabinet gives me a far better working height for routing and the wheels give me flexibility in the small shop space. Yes, I know shop furniture isn't the most interesting, but this piece gave me a little insight into cabinet making and could open a whole new area for my furniture design to move into. Having had a tricky introduction to woodworking, juggling jobs and having to come to terms with how to work and realise my designs, I'm grateful to have come through to the other side, where I can now comfortably produce furniture and content, while still having a full-time job. Well, somewhat comfortably. Upgrading the shop has allowed that growth to feel almost exponential and I'm excited to see where this journey continues to take me. Thank you for watching and as ever thank you for all your ongoing support. It means the world to me. Until next time.